Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday Bible study. We are just glad that you chose to be a part of this session on today. Uh, we just pray that our study will be fruitful, productive, beneficial for you, that it will challenge you, inspire you, and encourage you. Uh, let us go to our Heavenly Father in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful for all that you do, who you are, what you do in our lives each and every day. Thank you for the privilege to be able to study your word. Thank you for your word, which is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. It guides us, it leads us, it guards us, it directs us and protects us. Lord, we pray for your strength. We pray for your healing upon our world. We ask your blessings upon the study that we will engage in on today. In Jesus' name, amen. We are continuing our study on growing closer to God. And so today we are in Psalm 84 again. We will be looking at verses 11 and 12. Psalm 84, verses 11 and 12. And the Bible reads, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O oh, Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Oh, what a blessing, what an honor, what a privilege it is to be able to have the word of God, study God's word. Uh, and in our previous lessons, we have shared keys to intimacy with God. Uh, the first key that we talked about is that uh, if you want to be close to God, if you want to have an intimate relationship with God, you must come to see God for who he is, not for who you want him to be. Secondly, we noted that intimacy with God requires trust. It requires surrender. Uh, we also noted that intimacy with God requires transparency. And then finally, uh, we highlighted the fact that intimacy with God requires worship. It requires worship. And uh, today we're going to explore some of the blessings of having a connection, having a relationship with God. And it's found, two of those blessings are found right here in this text. Uh, the first blessing is found in the fact that God is. Blessings are found in who God is. Uh, the psalmist is drawn to the place of worship not because of the beauty of the place of worship, but due to the beauty of the person or the object of his worship. God attracted him to Jerusalem to worship. God attracts him because God is the sun and shield. He is a sun and he is shield. Here we have one of the few places in scripture where God is compared to the sun. Pagan religions, especially Egyptian religions, worship the sun. And so often in scripture, we see God as being above the sun. God is superior to the sun. It is clear that God created the sun. And so God did not want his people or anyone for that matter, worshiping the sun, but rather worshiping the creator. But here, God is compared to the sun and a shield. Uh, God is light, and God gives light. Uh, the light that God gives is guidance for the journey. Uh, so God is light, God gives light, and his light is guidance for the journey. Uh, in fact, he is the guidance that we need for our journey. Uh, so God is light. God is also joy and life. All these things are communicated in this idea that God is a son. God is also a shield. He is our protector. God protects you from those who would seek to defeat you. And who God is helps us to understand why the psalmist longed to be in the presence of the Lord and why God is worthy of our devotion. Who God is makes him worthy to be our king and our God. Who he is makes us realize that our strength is in him. Who God is makes it possible for the valley of weeping to be a spring of joy. 
who he is empowers us to go from strength to strength so that we can run and not be weary. We can walk and not faint. Who God is leads us to declare that a day in his courts is better than 10,000 anywhere else. Who he is leads you to conclude that it's better to be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Blessings are found in the fact that God is. And so he protects you from those who would seek to defeat you. And stability is found in the presence of the Lord. Uh, he is our rock. He's our shield. He is our defense. He is our protection. God is, and that's where blessings can be found in the fact that God is. Blessings can also be found in what God gives. And so many times we want to start here. We want to start with what God gives. And uh, we are asking for blessings and we pray for it and we want more. But we have to appreciate who God is, first and foremost. Uh, if we are going to ever put what God gives in its proper perspective, in its proper context, what God gives is a manifestation of who he is. So God is a sun and a shield. Then the text says, Psalm 84, verse number 11, the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Verse 12, O Lord of hosts, blesses the man who trusts in you. Blessings are found in the fact that the Lord gives. What does he give? He gives grace and he gives glory. God blesses his people with honor and favor. He doesn't give it because we deserve it. He gives it because he loves us. He gives grace. He gives grace for the journey and glory at the end of the journey. Uh, he gives both grace and glory. Uh, for us, that grace and glory are given in Christ Jesus, the word made flesh. As John says uh, in John chapter one, verse number 14, uh, that he dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ tabernacled among us. He uh, was temporarily with us in order to show us who God is. He, he dwelt with us. He is our temple. We meet God in the face of his son, Jesus. And as the church is being renewed today as we are being revived, the grace and glory of Christ are especially experienced in worship. Like Israel of old, as we gather in his name and direct our praises to him, uh, not just about him, but to him, his presence is manifest in our midst. And so our worship, our praise is not just about God, but it is to God. Uh, in Christ, we are saved, we are healed, we are delivered from our enemies. And God shows us his grace in countless ways. Uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit, demonstration of his grace. Uh, the privilege of serving the Lord, the demonstration of his grace. The fact that God has found a use for broken, messed up people like us. That's grace. The continual forgiveness that we have is grace. The empowerment to live abundantly is grace. The ability to give abundantly, that's grace. God's all sustaining strength being infused in our spirits and our times of weakness, that's grace. God's grace is not limited at all. In fact, God's grace is limited only by his limitless, limitless power. Uh, for every need, there's grace. For every hope, for every situation, there's grace. For everyone, there is grace. And the ultimate honor will be bestowed upon us when he crowns us and grants us a share of his glory. 
God gives grace and glory. Uh, God gives grace and he gives glory. We have this bold promise that no good thing will God withhold from those who up, walk uprightly. And while uh, this psalm is a psalm of worship, we are reminded of our Christian duty. Worship is part of our walk. It is not the extent of our walk, but worship is a part of our walk. We also have duty. There's an expectation for us to walk uprightly. The blessings of God are with those who live in obedience to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. No good thing will God withhold from those who walk uprightly. And good is determined by God's wisdom, not by our wants. Good is determined by God's wisdom, not by our wants. And so as we think about this idea of no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly, we must understand that there are some things that we don't receive from God because although we may think they are good, God knows that it's not good for us to have them, but God will not withhold good things from us. God will not give us that which would replace him as Lord if we are not tempted by God. And so blessings that come from God aren't designed to get us to replace God as Lord of our lives. And so God determines by his wisdom what good is. And he showers his blessings upon his children. God is a giving God who provides us with more than we need so that we can be a blessing to others. We are blessed to be a blessing. Therefore, those who lean on God are blessed. Blessed is the one who trusts in God. There's joy, there's sufficiency, there is power in God. And if you're going to draw closer to God, understand that you are blessed because of who God is. But you're also blessed in what God gives. Let God define what is good in your life. How have you've been challenged by the lesson today? Uh, are there some things you've asked God for and haven't gotten? Or what are your thoughts on why you have not received those things? If the promise is that no good thing will he will hold from the upright, where, what are my opportunities to evaluate my walk? What are my opportunities to reassess how good is defined in my life? Think about it. Talk about these things with others in your time in prayer. And if the Lord permits, we will see you on uh, next Wednesday. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer.